Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Games Hub, a crypto talk show with our investors, partners, and remarkable personalities. This week, we have a special guest, meet Gary Onko Putera, the CEO and founder of Boom Esports, a top esports team in Southeast Asia. And uh, Boom has over 30 professional players and has a recently won a big, important tournament, the final gameplay in Dota 2 against uh, uh, Fanatics. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I used to be Dota player myself so this is very Correct. dear and near I, I know how hard it is uh so we'll talk about this today uh and according to the latest news uh, on july 16th we will uh, play their final match with uh talon right to secure their first place in dpc southeast mm -hmm. asia uh the third tour our uh, congratulations it's honestly an amazing achievement guys i mean we we're routing for you as our partners you know so uh today we're going to discuss you know, the evolution of gaming and um, how eager people are, you know, to to understand how, how esports are proliferating, like, you know, the entire crypto space as well, transitions. And before we start, I'd like to remind you, you know, as our community that you can write our questions right here in the live chat and our guests will answer them at the end of the discussion. So no matter if you're on YouTube live, LinkedIn live, if you're on uh, Twitter live, any live you are, you are in, please write uh, your questions. We're going to ask Gary at the end. Um, Gary, hi again. Sorry for the long intro, but just had to talk. No about worries. How you are. <laughs> <clears throat> No worries, Constantine. <laughs> Yeah. So listen, we're, we're going straight to the point, right? So in recent years, the video game industry has experienced an enormous shift in the economic value given birth to like a lot of multi-billion, multinational, multi-dimensional businesses, right? So can, from your standpoint as a person who founded successful esports team and now like a, a big business, right? Can you tell, can you tell us how you enter this fast growing industry and you share a little bit more about your background. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, uh, if, if the, for those who don't know, I mean, I'm Indonesian. I was born in Indonesia. Um, <clears throat> and I guess, you know, quick background to the video gaming industry growing up, I've just always been, you know, really fond of uh, gaming, right? Whether that was Nintendo back in the days, um, you know, going to arcades before, you know, all these high, PC, uh, high tech PCs, high tech mobiles kind of kind of came along. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just always been a passion and a hobby of mine, right? Um, growing up in middle school and around high school, I actually uh, competed in 1.6, Counter-Strike 1.6 quite competitively, uh, mm. you know, locally in Indonesia. Um, but, you know, I mean, this is what, 15 years ago, I think there was no, uh, no career path yet at the time, right? Um, salaries are definitely uh, not as great as today. Uh, price pools for tournaments were also, you know, really, <clears throat> really small compared to today. Um, but yeah, it's something that I've just kind of always, you know, kind of was always interested in. Um, I, I continued my studies in the U.S. So I think um, I spent about eight years in the U.S. finishing my master's. So <clears throat> during those eight years, I think was when, you know, I kind of thought of esports as a viable career, right? Whether that was as a player or, or as, a, as a team owner. Um, I just remembered, you know, by the end um, of 2016, which was the year I left in the U.S., uh, tournaments were like starting, you know, they were starting to be millions of dollars. They were getting primetime TV on the weekend, like 7 p.m. on a Friday um, before an NBA game. So it was like, wow, you know, like it's starting to be really real. Um, whenever I go to malls in the U.S., people are wearing like esports jersey, like they're wearing football jerseys. You know, it's like, wow, these guys are actually pretty cool. So um yeah, so, you know, I, I, I came back, um, worked a bit for my parents, uh, but then I still had some connections for my playing days. So I kind of just started, you know, started Boom Esports as a side hobby, right? Mm -hmm. uh, picked up a Counter-Strike Global Offensive team at the time and a Dota 2 team. Um, and yeah, just kind of built from there. And then here we are, you know, kind of traveling here and there in the world, qualifying to a couple of big tournaments. So yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of the quick 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 short intro i appreciate it and you know i used to play myself so i, I totally understand your journey like back in the days so i'm originally from ukraine so back in the days that we had like those uh uh esports clubs you know where you used to hide during the night you know i can play <laughs> with teams. like uh, that was uh that was fun times you know like um so uh, look right now the world's first digital computer game like space war you know, like, you know when it was released in 60s like we we fear getting into back back in the days where before we were even born 
you know, it involved only two gamers playing against each other, like, you know, with a one spaceship each, you know, it was very, like, I was very surprised to know that the, you know, the first ever esports tournament was hosted, you know, like uh, by L Laboratory in Stanford University, actually. I don't know if you knew that, right? So yeah. five, 25 yeah. Stanford students were playing uh, the same game, Space War, like, but, you know, obviously many things have changed from there. Uh, now we have, you know, massively played games like with thousands, like maybe sometimes hundreds of thousands of people simultaneously. So, in your opinion, like, can you give us a little bit of, uh, you know, overview of the current state of the gaming industry? Where do you, where do you think is it is right now? Where do you think is uh, leading? And if you can connect it a little bit to the crypto evolution, it will be great. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you touch on it, right? Like, uh, gaming has grown uh, so much in the last, you know, decade, I guess, 10 years, right? Um, you see, back in the days we were playing console, it was all single player. If you wanted to play, you have to come over to your friend's house and all that stuff or our land cafe, whatever you name it. Um, and then now, you know, like you said, we we're playing these PC games, some now even mobile games, right. You can play on your phone with like hundreds of thousands of people at, at one time. And, um, and it's really great, right. That's, that's what, uh, advances in, in technology and internet, um, allows us to achieve nowadays. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, just quickly touch on the gaming industry. There's obviously, you know, different segmentations, right. Um, even I guess back in the day, maybe publishing was like the only kind of lucrative thing. Now you see so many game publishers. Um, now there's esports, right? Now there's teams, players, all that stuff. Um, now there's tournament organizers. These are all different um, kind of verticals of the gaming online industry, right? Uh, ga uh, video gaming industry, sorry. <clears throat> and then, you know, I guess, you know, touching on your last part, <clears throat> the most exciting one, which is, you know, I guess going to be the, the norm, maybe five to 10 years from now, um, you see this kind of... <clears throat> crazy growth of crypto, um, a couple of, you know, um, P2E or Web3 gaming, I guess, um, Axie Infinity, I guess is the most kind of uh, popularized one. Um, but I'm very sure that, uh, you know, with just with the current growth of, you know, game, quality of games, uh, quality of Web3 technological advances, um, I do think that in five to 10 years, um, there will be a triple A game that's, you know, there will be a Dota that's going to be web through, that's going to be maybe have a P2E, you know, mechanics to it. And, you know, it's, it's literally, again, it's just going to make it easier for people to make a career out of they love, right. Which is, which is gaming. Right. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's kind of a really quick yeah. overview of it. <laughs> yeah. We'll go deeper into it. So have, uh, you know, another question, which is continuation of the previous one. So, how have you entered, you know, like uh, the gaming industry, like professionally, right? So you know, what was your first like favorite video game? Like, you know, when did you actually realize that, you know, you can make enough money to make it as your, not just a hobby, but actual profession? Yeah. So um, like I said, you know, I've always been a gamer. So it was always um, something of interest to me. And obviously seeing esports specifically grew just kind of, um, I knew at the time, like 2016, if I was American or if I was, you know, kind of living in the U S and was going to make a career in the U S it was already very, um, you know, achievable then. Right. But then obviously I, I went back to Indonesia. Um, Southeast Asia is a bit of a less developed region, I guess at, at the time, right. 2016. So I knew that I had to start uh, kind of, kind of small, right. There wasn't a lot of teams. There wasn't a lot of, um, you know, popular games here too. Right. And even the taste of games are very different, right. Region to region, even now, even today, it's very different. Right. Um, in Asia, we play a lot of mobile games. Um, it's something very foreign to a lot of the, you know, of our like Western viewers, I guess, you know, like what you play games on your mobile and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of, I guess, you know, to put a concrete date on it, maybe 2018, just kind of two runs after uh, two years after running boom. Um, I just suddenly got busy, you know, it's like, I suddenly got a lot of meetings for sponsorships. A lot of teams were like reaching out. Do you want to pick us up? And that's kind of when, when I was like, all right, you know what, maybe I should take a stab at it, right? Like give it, you know, like my full focus, undivided attention. Uh, so that's kind of when, when, when I leap uh, full-time into Boom. Let me ask you a quick question, which is more, more okay. obviously very exciting. So what was the biggest prize you've ever, ever won? Like dollar, like in, in dollars, let's say. As an, as an org? Yeah. Um, in terms of prize pool, I think it would be around 150 grand US dollars. Okay. Um, but we've made over like a million dollars, uh, through, um, in-game items. 
So, you know, sometimes like nowadays, uh, I guess it's NFTs, right? The OG <laughs> NFTs. Uh, when, you, when, you, um, when you qualify to certain events or you play um, in, in certain tournaments, they make like um, in-game merchandise that's like team uh, colors, team flags, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of our fans uh, would, would buy it and we get a, 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 a share percentage of those revenue. Um, so uh, some went up to, you know, seven digits. So that would be like, I guess, the biggest uh, uh, income we've, we've gotten from uh, as an org yeah, to date. Hopefully there's bigger uh, deals to be made <laughs> down the road. But yeah. Yeah, I see. Um, uh, that's that's like you know listen that's impressive like so in-game assets we can talk about it like a bit further right you know because in reality like and you know, how do you monetize let's say you have one million dollar worth of in-game assets right you know so a lot of people who are not like a bit gamers will be interesting for them how do you even like sell them because you see the difference between like i understand the world of nfts at least like you have a like somehow <laughs> the promise of liquid market now how do you sell just a regular in-game item that's a different story <laughs> Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think because they make it so seasonal and kind of like season based, like, you know, let's say there's a major, uh, for example, let's say the next major is coming up, um, you know, maybe Valve or Dota 2 developers, Valve would, would create some kind of like um, boom uh, official skin for a certain hero in the game that all of our choosing. And then a lot of the, you know, like, and then the masses uh, would then be interested in purchasing this, this hero or skin, right? Uh, of our team colors or whatever that is. And then we, we get a share of that, um, of the revenue. Um, and then I guess, um, you know, in terms of kind of understanding NFTs or the value of in-game items, right? Uh, you can think of it, I guess, as, as just, you know, just literally just like NFTs, right? I mean, those who've dabbled into NFTs, uh, when we talk to, a, you know, like to a general uh, person, I guess, on the road and be like, hey, look, I just spent, you know, uh, even if it's a hundred dollars on a picture, uh, they'll be like, I, I don't understand it. Right. But, but, you know, the market is there and the demand is there. Um, and the user base of these games are there right at the end of the day. Um, CSGO skins uh, for those who play CSGO or, you know, kind of spend a lot of time in CSGO, you know, some of those skins can go up to, you know, 50, 50 K for, for like an op skin, you know, and, and everyone's like, it's just a cosmetic, but like, you know, when, when there's a mark, uh, when there's a demand, there's a, there's a market for it. Nice. Now that's, that's good to know. So what's your take on this? What do you think will happen with the evolution of esports and how will it interact with in metaverse? Yeah, um, I think just esports uh, as like uh, started five years ago when I started, you know, Boom Esports, everyone's like, this guy went to the US, get a master's degree and is making an esports team. Like what even is an esports team, you know? And here we are, right? Like, oh, now it's very mainstream now. Everyone kind of knows about esports. Um, I feel, I honestly feel the same way about metaverse, right? Um, as someone who's, you know, kind of, you know, I guess um, involved in the web three industry, you know, I kind of invest in crypto and, and all the above. Um, I think that, you know, it's something that's inevitable in five to 10 years, right? Um, and that's uh, mainly due to the, again, advancement of technology, like the rapid advancement of technology, right? Um, before maybe, you know, to get faster internet takes you like five years. Now, every year you're getting like, you know, from one gig to 10 gig speed, you know, it's just exponential um, growth, right? And you see the shift of working class, right? Um, you know, back when I was trying to, let's say, play professionally in high school, um, you know, my parents are very, you know, they're like, what, what, you're, you're playing PC games, you're, you're trying to go all in, what is this, right? But then now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be the one that's going to be parents, right? 
And if my kid ever goes to me and be like, you know, and if he's really good, you're going to be realistic, right? Because not everyone's going to be able to be a pro, but if it was realistic, I'm, I, I would be more open to the idea, right? Um, and so the metaverse, I think it's something that you're seeing the shift of, you know, especially with the pandemic that just happened, right? Everyone's now just always on their device, right? This work from home for like two years. And now even traditional companies are now starting to realize that, look, we can be as productive without actually, you know, wasting time in transportation, traffic and all the above, right? Um, and then if you look at kids nowadays, they're always glued to their iPads, phones, computers, whatever that is, right? So I think eventually, you know, in five to 10 years, metaverse is just something that's going to be, um, you know, commonly accepted. Um, and I think that it's, as a, from an esports point of view, I think it's really great because I can imagine, you know, uh, somewhere down, down the road, uh, as, you know, the advances happen, imagine how cool would it be if you're watching an esports event, but like immersive, like you're actually in the map, but you're a viewer, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, that's so cool, right? Um, and you can use, you know, your avatars or whatever that is. Um, or let's say teams start making their own metaverse or tournaments or, or the games, right? Like the games have their own metaverse. And, you know, you, you can always go and visit, um, you know, the, the lore of the game that you love so much, um, you know, instantly, right? And it's such, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be so great. Um, esport. If, if you enjoy watching esports now, like you should be excited for what, you know, the potential of like an esports metaverse, right. To happen. Um, so, yeah. Let's talk about the practicality of this. So you, mm -hmm. I mean, you're number one team in like in, in Indonesia, we can say so, mm -hmm. right. And in your league and your kind of, you know, the games you represent, I'm sure you're, you're, respected in the entire Southeast Asia, right? You know, and, you know, what do you think is going to happen practically in the metaverse? Let's say, what, first of all, when do you think you will uh, playing in the metaverse? How will it look? How will it change the gameplay? And maybe let's talk about the few things in practicality that, and you can even speculate a little bit because we don't know what's going to happen, obviously. I mean, technology is not up to par right now. It's not ready fully to, yep. to handle like, thousands of players simultaneously that's we know that for sure but still let's let's imagine it is there already right you know what do you think is going to happen yeah i think um you know definitely a lot of the esports teams would kind of uh well first of all i think a lot of all, a lot of the publishers that are relatively smart i guess you know not not to offend anyone uh would definitely start um investing into their own metaverse right because at the end of the day, you know, these games, they're all of these titles, right? These different games, they have their own world and their own lore. They just kind of publish. Uh, I mean, but you can only experience it through the game, right? Because that's, you know, I guess kind of touching on what you said about the limits of what it is now. But then, you know, when specu speculatively, I would assume that and have their little plots in the in their metaverse, right? Where our fans could come and see us, maybe then see your team, maybe see GameSpad or whatnot. And then keep in mind that at the end of the day, nowadays, all these big publishers and all these big video games company, they got a couple of games from the same world, right? Um, kind of like interconnected. So that like, you know, we always have like fan theories and, you know, all, all the gamers are always into creating this kind of, oh, what, what are the characters from, let's say, League of Legends have to do with Valorant because they're both Riot, right? But then once Riot, hopefully one day they'll make their own metaverse, then you can you can really see what the creators had in mind, right? For these different um, things, right? And like I said, I think the viewership experience would just be kind of unreal, right? I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. But, you know, if right now I'm watching from players A point of view, players B point of view. How cool would it be if I was like just a bystander in the metaverse watching them? You know, it's like as if I'm there, but I'm not there, right? I think that would be like really cool. Uh, Gary, really appreciate your time and appreciate all your, you know, the knowledge that you've shared. We want to do it more and I want to do it again. Uh, like for now, like we just, you know, really like appreciate that. And from on behalf of our community and please visit, you know, the, the website that we'll share the, the, you know, that, you know, Boom is our official partner. So uh their community now you can write you know like uh all your questions so so not only like during the 
the episode will forward it obviously to to the guys you know like even after the show they will i'm sure they will comment it in their spare time uh so yeah thank you everyone for joining you know games hub today crypto talk with our investors partners and remarkable personalities just as scary are uh listen uh, listen to us uh, uh, every week at 3 p.m utc on youtube live uh, on every thursday and then we have as you see on twitter linkedin and other platforms so we really appreciate your questions and please prepare more for the next time and so far just uh watch some amazing games of uh boom like they're like out there publishing it on yeah. youtube you vibrant communities in discord and other social media and we're gonna keep on supporting them to become number one in the world right definitely thank you thank you game side i mean it's, it's again like i said it's no coincidence we got to where we are this year um after you guys came on board right <laughs> yes. we're, we're we're lucky, charm. lucky yeah. charm yes thank you so much gary and we thank you so much have a great day everyone All stay right, safe cheers. thanks bye